Hi, it's week two of our series where we're working on hip, knee pain, and these are appropriate, this uh, practice is appropriate if someone has just had some knee or hip surgery in the last little while. Um, I'm Cheryl Gordon, I'm a yoga therapist, and welcome to my home studio. And if you haven't watched week one, may I suggest that you try to find that um, because it would be a really good foundation for all the weeks that are to come. Once again, I'm working in a lying down position. I'm on the floor of my yoga studio, but for many people getting up and down from the floor at this point in their rehab is just not safe or possible. So you can do everything I'm doing on your bed, or if you have a massage table at home, you can use a massage table. But I'm gonna start in a lying down position. The only thing that I'm going to need today for props is a yoga block, and a lot of us don't have those kind of things laying around the house. So you can also use a pretty full box of Kleenex and I'll be showing you how to do that. So let's come to lie down and establish our breath again. We worked on this in video one and it is fundamental. So as I said, go back and do that video if you haven't had a chance yet. So our knees are bent at a comfortable, feet are comfortably uh, distanced from the body. And we're just gonna take a moment, if it's accessible, to put your hands somewhere on your body and begin to breathe in and out through the nose as best you can. Notice a slight expansion on the inhale and contraction on the exhale. This is nothing you need to force or do properly. It happens when you start to relax. Kids breathe this way. Dogs breathe this way. This is my dog, Natalie, by the way. So once we've got a connection with our breath, we're going to do our best to time each inhale and exhale with the movement. So the first movement is dropping the knee out to the side. We started with that movement uh, last week in our video. We're going to go without a strap this time. When you're ready, you're going to choose the foot, the leg that, or the hip that's happier today. So I'm going to start with this leg. You choose the one that has not been operated on or that is performing a bit better right now. On the inhale, I'm going to drop the knee out just a little bit, not too far. And on the exhale, I'm going to pull the knee back into its original position. There's no pressure to get the foot or sorry, the knee all the way to the ground. This is just a simple movement. Where I want to take my attention, however, is in this area of the body around the hip joints the pelvis, the sacrum. Try to keep the lower back really quiet and balanced onto the mattress or the floor. We've probably done enough on that first side, so let's just take a breath to rest now. If, and I'm just gonna demonstrate, if you drop your leg out and your whole body rolls to that side, we've really lost the object of this particular exercise. We wanna make sure that we're just keeping our torso, spine, back, pelvis, sacrum, hips, quiet, just working with the leg. That's the only movement in the body. Let's go to the other side. Prepared for the other side might be different. So inhale, slowly drop the knee out. Exhale, lift the knee so that it's back in its original position. Remember from week one, we talked about pain-free range of motion. So if your hip is not moving very much, if your leg's not moving very much, how's that gonna make you feel? Are you gonna feel like you're no good at this? Like you're never gonna get back to your old self again? That you're failing? Let's look at those feelings and recognize that they are unnecessary and unhelpful. Probably four or five times is enough. So let's let it go at that. When you're working through a challenge, like a hip or a knee problem, you want to really practice that self-compassion piece. You'll heal much faster and you'll be happier during your healing time. So there's no point in judging what your hip or your knee is doing or feeling. It is what it is. So let's work with it in that range of motion. I'm going to go back to my happier leg again and I'm going to stretch it out straight if possible. Now you'll notice your kneecap faces in one direction or another when you stretch your leg out. We're gonna exaggerate that just a little bit. I'm gonna roll the kneecap so it faces outwards a little bit, and then keeping the leg on the ground, keeping my back quiet, 
I'm going to roll the leg inward so the kneecap kind of faces across the center line to the other leg. Let's time this with breath. Inhale, roll out. Exhale, roll in. Now again, my back, my sacrum, my pelvis is quiet. My buttocks muscles are relaxed. I'm just rolling the thigh bone out and in. The four or five times is enough. Notice if there was any discomfort, reduce the range of motion, don't trigger the pain signals. Don't the danger signals, we might call them. And know that what we're trying to do, if you can picture your big old thigh bone, it has a big head on it, kind of like my fist, here's the hip socket, and we're just trying to roll it around. This is a movement that gets really stiff, especially as we get older, so we're trying to get that movement back but really easy, really kindly. Let's try the other leg. This might be the leg that's just been worked on, so give it a little extra slack. Inhale, outward rolling. In exhale, inward rolling. Outward rolling and inward rolling. Good, and we'll do that a couple times. Maybe four or five all together. Trying to stay as relaxed in the shoulders, face relaxed, breath easy, you know, all those things we've been talking about. And then when you're done, come back to the resting position. Take a breath in, let a breath go. We're going to tie some of that together. In yoga, we have this thing called vinyasa, which really means movements tied together with breath. So the breath is a little thread that weaves amongst the movements, creating a wonderful tapestry. So let's do a little vinyasa with those movements. So here we go. Inhale, let your leg drop to the side, just like we practiced earlier. Exhale, stretch the leg out. Inhale, roll the leg in, rolling in. Exhale, keep the knee pointing inward as you bend the knee. A little knock knee action there. And then again, inhale, drop the leg out just as far as it goes easy. Exhale, straighten the leg. Inhale, internally rotate at the hip joint. And exhale, keep the knee pointing into the other leg as you bend. Note, keep going at your own pace, nice and relaxed and slow. Notice the foot never leaves the floor. I'm being super lazy when I do this. And again, the low back is staying pretty quiet. The hips are staying really soft and pain-free. It's my last vinyasa with this leg. And I can return to the opening position. Now moving in sequence like that, nice and free, can really start to bring some lubrication to the hip joint, to the knee joint, and allow us to feel a little bit more space. So you might feel that. I'm gonna repeat that now on the other side. Exactly the same thing. Inhale, drop the knee out to the side as far as it goes on its own. Exhale, straighten the leg out. The outer ankle bone still touches the floor. Inhale, internally rotate the leg. And exhale, bend the knee, dragging the foot back, knee pointing inward. And repeating. So if you get a little mixed up and you're inhaling when you were supposed to exhale, it doesn't really matter. I just make this stuff up, you know. <laughs> but it gives you a chance to really slow the movement down by utilizing breath to weave the movements together. We keep a little bit more of the brain engaged with what we're doing. And that's good. The more the brain pays attention to this and not worrying about your rehab, the faster you'll get better. This is my last vinyasa on this side. And then I'm gonna come back to the opening position just with my feet on the floor, taking a breath in and a breath out. Now this is when you ha can use your yoga block if you have it or I'm gonna use my box of Kleenex. It's a pretty full box of Kleenex, so it's still pretty firm. And I'm gonna place it so the Kleenex <laughs> is down between my knees. Good. Now what happens here is that box or that block between your legs just makes you think 
about what you have to do to keep the block or the box of Kleenex in place. You may notice a little awakening along the insides of your thighs. These are good muscles for us to be working on in our rehab. Place your feet carefully into the mattress or into the floor so you really feel your right foot and your left foot and you know where that connection point is. Keeping your great gaze straight up at the ceiling, take some time now to press a little bit more firmly into the floor. What happens? Do you notice that your buttocks contracts a little bit? The backs of your thighs contract a little bit and you feel like your bum's lifting up a bit and then you can relax. Let's time that with our breathing for four breaths. This is called a mini bridge pose because you're kind of making a bridge with your body. So when you're ready to inhale, press down with the feet first, engage the backs of the thighs and the buttocks and just elevate, just create a tiny bit of space under the bum and then exhale lower down slowly. Relax completely before you start your next inhale and lift a little bit. Again, pain-free range of motion. Don't try to push your hips up really high or do anything funky. You want to make sure this is not irritating your low back. It's not irritating your knees. Good. And I'll just say one more thing about knees here. As you lift your bum up just a bit from the mattress, push your knees away from you. That hopefully will keep your knees pain-free as you do this. Wonderful. I think that's good work for today. You can rest as I suggested in week one's video. You can take a pillow and place it underneath the backs of your thighs and stretch your legs out. You can take five, 10, 15 minutes just for you, just to rest and let everything settle that we have done today. Thank you so much for joining me. We'll be putting out another video next week, progressing our rehab just a little more and a little more. My suggestion is that you repeat these exercises, this program every day, two, maybe even three times a day. It doesn't take very long, but that consistency and that frequency really makes the difference. It's better to do this little by little then wait a couple days and then do an hour and a half of exercise. It overwhelms the system to load it like that. Little tiny bits done frequently with lots of kindliness will make big gains. If you want any more information, my contact information is on the screen and I'd love to hear from you. Have a great day.